Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Rebel Free. In today's video, I'm going to explain you about the memento pattern in the subject of design patterns. Okay, till now we have learnt about what structural patterns are, what creational patterns are, and what behavioral patterns are, right? So we are done with all the structural patterns, all the creational patterns, and we are left out with some of the behavioral patterns. And uh, let us understand them. We are uh, still left out with uh, memento, observer, st uh, st I mean state, strategy template and visitor so these are the five things uh, six things which which we are left out in the subject so the, let us uh, see them now and in this video i'm going to explain you about the memento pattern memento here actually the spelling is m e m e n t o okay right so don't confuse uh, i have uh, first written it as o and then i changed it to e um, and i'm sorry for that so let us see about memento pattern so while discussing about any design pattern we are going what we will learn intent also known as if it is not having any other alternative name then we will skip this also known as section right and then motivation then applicability the structure the participants the consequences right and the known users related patterns and so on right and you can also include collaborations and sample code if you want to include but uh, including sample code is actually uh, mandatory if you are writing it for 10 marks answer if you not writing it for a short answer then you can skip the sample code section done and so let us get into the video now first what is the intent of this memento pattern so what is the main intention right without violating the encapsulation what do you mean by encapsulation we will be binding together right methods and the data everything will be binded together that is my uh, encapsulation without violating encapsulation capture and externalize an object's internal state so that the object can be restored to the state later right so without violating the principles of encapsulation what we have to do we need to capture the internal state of the object so that again whenever there is requirement with that state that can be restored and we can use that okay so we need to always keep on capturing the state of the object right so that whenever there is again requirement that can be reused okay done so that is about the memento pattern and this memento pattern is also known as token the other name for the memento pattern is token okay done and it also has motivation like all the design patterns so let us see what is the motivation for this memento pattern so the motivation the main motivation for this pattern is in some situations like i explained in the intent in some situations there may be a requirement of storing the internal state of the object and restore it that is nothing but preserving the internal state saving the internal state so that it can be used later whenever there is requirement okay it is mainly used in the cases of error or failure if some error has occurred then you can restore the state of the object and you can rectify that error if some failure has happened the system has failed uh, crashed in middle in between of the process then in that case also you can happily use this the I mean you can with, with the help of this memento pattern whatever the say state of the object that you have saved that you can happily use in case of errors or failures of the system okay done so this is uh, the main motivation and example I've written calculator there right so I'll explain you how calculator is an example see what calculator will actually do uh, it will do it will perform some mathematical calculations right mathematical or scientific calculations it will be do doing right and we are defining a calculator which has an ability to maintain the list of all the previous calculations that it has done so in our computers or you know in in some of the mobiles also you'll have the history so uh, if you manually go and delete it will be deleted or you'll have some settings to delete that history right so whatever the previously done transactions sorry not transactions calculations are there all that history will be maintained in the calculator done so what will happen because of maintaining the all the other um, previous calculations previous uh, you know calculations which are being done the memory of the calculation calculator will become large right so because of this calculator will become large it will also become complex right so it becomes large and it becomes complex so in that situations what you need to do is we should use an external class which is called as a manager class so you're going to use an external class which is called as a manager class and what will uh, this external manager class do 
all the previous states of the calculator class will be stored by this manager class so instead what calculator has to do actually if there is no manager class it has to perform the calculations and it also has to store the calculations right but what happens with the help of manager class you can store all the previous transactions previous calculations here that means the previous state of the object is stored by using a separate external class which is called as the manager class and now the uh, this uh, calculator class becomes very simple right because its task is only to perform calculation storing task it doesn't have only performing calculations task it has so now it becomes simple right so this is why you need to use a uh, here is where this memento will help you in st uh, storing the state of the particular object okay done so this is how memento pattern will work done now what are the applicabilities uh, like applicability in the sense where you can use it where, where in which situations you can use this so you can use this memento pattern when a snapshot of an object state should be stored so that it can be restored to that state later that is what we have learnt in intent and uh, motivation right whenever there is a situation that you need to store the current state of the object so that that stage can be retrieved later for later use for future use or in case of errors or in case of fail use in that situations you can go with this memento pattern okay and also when we have a direct interface for obtaining the state would express expose the implementation details and breaks the objects of encapsulation so when you are having an interface where you know that will expose the implementation that is it will not hide data encapsulation will not be done right in that situations also you can use this memento so that the encapsulation can be preserved and also object state can be preserved done so whenever there is a chance of exposing implementation details whenever there is a uh, risk that you have observed that okay in this situation maybe the implementation details can be exposed outside then in that case what you can do is you can happily use this memento pattern so that your encapsulation will be saved that is your objects will not uh, i mean your uh, state or whatever methods or whatever implementation details are there that will not be exposed and also you can uh, preserve the state so that you can achieve encapsulation encapsulation will not be broken encapsulation will not be um, you know taken away done in those situations also you can use this memento pattern done the next comes the structure of memento pattern so structure is like you'll have originator memento and caretaker this is a structure and we will understand what about each and every participant so here what are the participants originator is the number one number two is memento and number three so we have total of three participants here right so you need to draw the structure and whatever the things whatever the classes or whatever the objects or whatever the uh, things you have in the structure all of them you need to describe and that comes the participant section okay now let us see what are the participants we have the first is memento what memento will do here this is memento right so that will store the internal state of the originator object so it will store the orig internal state of the originator object and it also has two interfaces what are those two interfaces number one is originator and the other is caretaker okay originator caretaker done so memento will store the internal state of the originator object done now now let us move what uh, is originator and what is a uh, caretaker is let us know so first what is originator originator will create a memento that contains a snapshot of its current internal state done so as we know originator is an object right so it will create a memento which will contain the state of this which is which will have the state of this originator object what memento says it will store the state of the originator object done so same if you can link both the definitions and next comes the caretaker so caretaker the word itself says it is responsible for the safety of the memento pattern so it will you know uh, whatever the contents of the memento are there whatever the option of you know data or whatever the methods whatever you have in the memento so it will take care of that so that the details will not be exposed to others the implementation details or whatever is not exposed to others right so it is responsible for the safety of the memento as the word caretaker itself says that right and now what are the consequences let us see so clear about the structure and participants right we have we have only three participants the originator memento and the caretaker that's all all the three are interrelated to each 
each other and caretaker is very easy to remember since the word caretaker it say itself says that it is responsible for the safety it is responsible for taking care of it done so now comes the consequences so here the first one is we know it will preserve the encapsulation boundary so what do you mean by consequences actually consequences can be either advantages or they can be disadvantage disadvantages as well so it will preserve the encapsulation boundaries so that is one of the consequence and it also simplifies the originator because the state of the originator the originator need not uh, store this its state right so it can do its task and the pro um, you know the process of storing the state of the originator is done by the memento so it will simplify the task of the originator done and using mementos might be somewhat expensive because they require more data st uh, storage right more data storage is required because they need to store all the states of the originator done so that is the reason why it takes a bit expensive to maintain the mementos or to use the mementos right and hidden costs in caring for mementos and even you know when we are caring for memento also we have to we are having some more additional costs like what are these uh, what are those costs let us see so if you are having a lightweight caretakers in that cases if lightweight caretakers you'll have lightweight and heavyweight right so in case of lightweight caretakers what happens they cannot store large amount of data right so in that cases you need to uh, purchase additional data or you need to uh, omit some data right in those cases also some hidden costs some other um, you know other costs costs will be there done so these are the consequences of memento pattern and now moving over to the implementation part in implementation part so language support so how uh, i mean you know how language support is given and all let us see so actually memento has two interfaces we know that right one was the originator and was was the caretaker that we have discussed in, in when we are learning about participants now they also can be called as wide interface and narrow interface as well wide interface is nothing but originator and that will be declared as private and narrow interface is nothing but the caretaker and that will be declared as uh, so not only caretaker all the other objects apart from originator will come under the narrow interface okay among them as you know caretaker i'm telling about caretaker and that will be declared as public so whatever the wide interfaces you are having that is the originator has to be declared private and apart from originator all the other objects are to be declared as public okay done and storing incremental changes so how do you uh, like you know what ha actually happens how it is implementation uh, implemented so first by language support is given by the interfaces and uh, what you have to declare public and what you have to declare private you understood right now storing the incremental changes that is if there is any changes in the state if there is any change in the state that has to be updated incrementally suppose you have at uh, today's date is 2nd of august right so on 2nd of august it is at state s1 on 3rd of august it got changed to some state s2 then this s2 has to be updated to the previous state so previously it was in s1 state right as on uh, 20, uh, 2nd of august but ag again on the next day it got converted into some other state right and that state has to be updated and the next day if, next day if there is any other state conversion that has to be updated so incremental changes are to be updated done and what are the known uses of this undo and restore operations can be done so that is very clear right and database transactions also in database transactions also you'll have commit rollback and all right so those kind of transactions also this memento pattern will help you okay done so these are the known uses and what are the related patterns to this memento the command one and the iterator command pattern and iterator pattern are related so i already made videos on what command and iterator is so you can watch you can understand right so that's all for this video guys i hope this video is useful for you and i tried my best to explain it in the best way but still if you are not able to understand or if any difficulties at any part then just let me know that in the comment section i'll definitely try to uh, improve my teaching and uh, let's meet up in the next coming video and if you're still having any doubts just let me know that in the comment section i'll definitely try to clear all your doubts for sure and if you want me to make any other topics or any other videos or any other sub subjects just let me know that in the comment section and also if um, you know you have not yet subscribed to my channel do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever i post a new video